I'd like to welcome each of you to our study on the book of Genesis today. We're in Genesis chapter 49, and uh, Genesis chapter 49, we're going to see here that uh, Jacob is uh, actually dies in this chapter. Before he dies, he calls his family around him, and he speaks some words that really are very prophetic words about what is going to happen. Uh, Jacob calls for all of his sons to come so that they might, he might tell them what would happen to their offspring. We see that in verses 1 and 2. And, uh, you know, normally we don't think of Jacob as a prophet. Yet in this chapter, there are some remarkable prophecies. And um, in many of these prophecies, there's a double fulfillment also, if you're familiar with prophecy and these double fulfillments. And while many of these uh, have been fulfilled in part, yet there is much to be fulfilled in the last days. Uh, much of the Old Testament history unfolded as it was prophesied in Genesis chapter 49. And uh, this is very noticeable in the book of Joshua as well as elsewhere as the uh, children of Israel go in to possess the promised land. So as we come into Genesis chapter 49, we see that G Jacob really speaks the most important words of his life in this chapter just before he dies. And these words were his divinely inspired blessing to his children. Um, and this patriarchal blessing, which is largely prophetic, is the main theme uh, of this chapter of Genesis. So with that in mind, let's read the first four verses and see what he has to say about Reuben uh, in these verses. So Genesis 49, verse 1, it says, And Jacob called on to his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. So he wants to tell them what's going to happen to them. Then in verse, 22, or verse 2, Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. It's interesting there that he tells them that the words that they're hearing is coming from Israel, but he calls them the sons of Jacob, which, re, which would remind them of their faults. Um, and then it says in verse 3, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. So as you listen to that verse, it sounds like there's some wonderful things coming for Reuben. But then in verse 4, he says, I'm stable as water, thou shalt not excel. Because thou wentest up to thy father's big, that then defilest thou it, he went up to my couch. And it's sad, but this is really the first time that Jacob calls Reuben out on this particular scene. Now, as the firstborn, Reuben should have had first rank among his brethren. Uh, he should have had leadership of the tribes and a double share of the inheritance. Keep in mind, the, that's what the firstborn was eligible for. You see that? In Genesis chapter 27, as uh, Isaac, Jacob's father, calls who he thought was Esau to give him that blessing. And uh, you also see the places like Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 17, you see there also uh, this whole idea of the um, double blessing given. So what we see is Reuben's privileges were great. Uh, you could say he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He had position because he was the firstborn, and which reminded us that he was the one who would fall heir to the birthright. He had prestige and he had power, but privileges will be lost when character is lacking. And that's exactly what we see as we come into these verses. And through sinful acts, he forfeited his blessing. We see, first of all, the sinful act of lust here in these verses. And... Uh, and Jacob is referring to that which happened back in Genesis chapter 35, and we looked at that some time ago, but let me just read you the verse that reminds you about what Reuben had done in Genesis 35, and in verse 22, it says, And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in a land that Reuben went and lay with Bela, his father's concubine, and Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. So there we see that he uh, lay with Bela, and we know that certainly that that is contrary to the teachings of Scripture. This particular verse was written after that, but we know that the teaching is there in the Word of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 20, it says, Cursed be he that lieth with his father's wife, because he hath uncovered his father's skirt, and all the people shall say, Amen. So we see that 
that one of the sins that caused Reuben to forfeit the blessing was a sin of lust. And how many people have lost great things in their life because of this evil sin of lust, this sin that they are not willing to deal with as they ought to deal with it. But not only was there the sin of lust, we also see the sin of, of uh, instability. It says that he was unstable as water. You know, as I as I was thinking about these verses, I was reminded of, of some of these truths regarding this. Um, you know, this business of unstable as water really refers to Reuben's uncontrolled passion. He was not able to control his passions. He wasn't able to control his emotions. And the Bible describes him as unstable as water. And friends, we must be able to control our passions if privileges are going to come to us and if privileges are going to profit us. And Reuben's uncontrolled passions resulted in his immoral conduct. And you see that in Genesis 49 and verse 4. He was unstable as water. Uh, thou shalt not excel because thou wengest up to thy father's big. Then defilest thou it. He went up to my couch. So he tells him here, thou shalt not excel. Reuben's immorality crippled him. And, and immorality is something that cripples so many today as well. And friends, we must be very careful that we do not allow lust and, and instability in our life to ruin our testimonies as believers and to ruin our lives as a people of God. The Bible says this about instability in James 1 verses 6 to 8. It says, but let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That idea of double-minded is a man that is dividing in his allegiance. And oh, friends, it's so sad today that there are so many that are divided in their allegiance. And uh, we need to be reminded of the importance of having an undivided allegiance. No man can serve two masters and we must be wholeheartedly following that which God desires us to follow. In 2 Peter 2, and in verse 14, it's talking about characteristics of the last days. And it says, Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. All friends, instability is a great, thing. It's a, it's a dangerous thing in the world that we live in today. So I want you to notice the fulfillment of this prophecy as we close today. First of all, if you would take the time to read First Chronicles chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, you would find out that Reuben did not prevail in the birthright. We looked at that a little bit in the last chapter. We saw how that uh, Manasseh and Ephraim, Joseph's children, um, received that double portion of the birthright. Joseph received the double portion of the birthright because of the life of integrity that Joseph had. And as you study through the Old Testament scriptures, you would find out that Reuben really prevails in nothing. There is no king, no prophet, no judge that comes from the tribe of Reuben. Actually, they don't even cross... Uh, the settle in the promised land. They settled on the wilderness side of Jordan. And you, you can see that in Numbers 32, 5 and in Judges chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. Dan, our group also was the smallest portion of all the tribes. They were a tribe that was numerically weak. You know, according to Numbers 1, 21, they were numbered as 46,500 in their tribe. And then in Numbers 26, verse 7, they had shrunk to 43,000. They had lost 2,500 pe people in their tribe in an age where most other tribes had grown. And indeed, we see the consequences of Reuben's sin lived out in that tribe. Friends, let's not think that we can allow immorality, that we can allow our lusts and our passions to rule our life and, and, and an unstable life that we can have, and it will not affect us. That is not true. It not only affects us, it affects those who are coming behind us. Let's seek to have stability in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, and let's do exactly what he is that he wants us to do. Let's live in a way that honors and pleases his name. Friends, he's worthy 
of all the honor and the glory that we can give to him and so much more. Have a great day.